Now time has come to practice with the computation of the real integrals with the help of Cauchy residue theorem. And our first integral is as follows. It's an integral of a trigonometric type from 0 to 2 pi d phi over 5 minus 3 sine phi. Whenever you deal with trigonometric integrals with integration domain spanning the period of the integrand, you should always try the exponential change of variables. The aim of this change is to turn your segment of integration into a closed contour. To see what I mean, let's try the change of the variable z equals e to i phi. As phi changes from 0 to 2 pi, our z-complex variable moves along a closed unit circle. This way our initial integral is turned into a closed contour integral. So let us perform this change. dz equals e to i phi i d phi. This way d phi is equal to dz over i z. Now let's plug in this change into our integrand. Sine phi is transformed as 1 over 2 i z minus 1 over z. And as a result, we have a standard closed contour integral of a complex function f of z, where the function itself, after a simple algebra, is transformed into minus 2 over 3z squared minus 10 iz minus 3. And now we can use Cauchy residue theorem to compute this closed contour integral. It's equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues inside our contour. And the region inside is the region which stays to the left as we move along our contour. We move in the counterclockwise direction, so our region inside is simply a unit disk. And now let's find the poles of our function, which are simply the zeros of our denominator. In the denominator we have a quadratic polynomial, and its roots are z equals 3i and z equals i over 3. Those are first order roots, and that means they are simple poles of our function. And that means that to compute the residues of the function, it's enough to use a shortcut formula which we discussed in one of our previous lectures. Namely, if a function can be represented as a ratio of two functions, h and z, then the residue of our function at a simple pole is equal to h of z0 divided by g prime of z0. Here our h function is minus 2, while our g function is this second order polynomial. This way, the residue of our function in point z equals i over 3 is equal to minus 2 divided by the derivative of our polynomial 6z minus 10i taking at point z equals i over 3 and we obtain 1 over 4i and as a result our integral is simply equal to 2 pi i times 1 over 4i which gives pi by 2 and that completes our calculation now let's study the next example at this time, our integration domain is spanning from minus infinity to plus infinity of function dx over x to the power of 4 plus 1. In principle, you can solve this integral using elementary tools of real calculus, but the computation is tedious and a little bit cumbersome. So let's see how things work in the realm of complex analysis. And in complex analysis, things work only for closed contour integrals. So we need to devise some closure of this contour. And whenever we deal with infinite domain of integration, the most often used closure is the upper or lower semi-arc. In this case, let's opt for upper semicircle. And now let's promote our integrant function into a complex plane, f of z equals 1 over z to the power of 4 plus 1, and study this closed contour integral f of z dz, which naturally consists of our initial integral plus the integral along the upper semicircle. And the reason we introduced this upper semicircle is that the integral along this arc is usually very easily computed, because the argument z stays large as we move along this semicircle. And that of course means that we can use the asymptotics of our function rather than the exact function. The asymptotics of f of z at large z is simply 1 over z to 4. Now let's build the estimate of this arc integral. Let us introduce a parameterization, z equals r times e to i phi, where r is the radius of the circle tending to plus infinity. dz now equals r times e to i phi i d phi, 
and f of z dz is turned into 1 over r cubed times some function of phi. As a result, our arc integral is proportional to 1 over r cubed times some integral which depends only on the angle phi. And as r tends to infinity, this integral of course tends to zero. And that is why our closed quantum integral is now simply equal to our original integral. And the only thing which is left to us is to compute this closed quantum integral using residue theorem. Therefore, we simply need to compute the residues of our function inside this quantum. To find the poles, we need to find the roots of our denominator. So we need to solve the equation z to 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. It's an elementary equation, and its solution reads e to i pi by 4 plus i pi n by 2, where n is some integer. This equation has four first-order roots, and as a result, our function has four simple poles. The poles positioned inside our contour are z1 equals e to i pi by 4, and z2 equals e to 3 pi i by 4. Here they are. This way, our integral is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues at these poles. And to compute the residues themselves, let's again use this shortcut formula for simple poles. Again, our function can be represented as the ratio of two elementary functions, h of z, which is equal to 1, and g of z, which is equal to z raised to the power of 4 plus 1. As a result, the general formula for the residue is 1 over 4 z0 cubed, where z0 is the position of the corresponding pole. And this way we obtained for the residues 1 over 4 times e to 3 pi i by 4 for the residue at point z0 is equal to e to i pi by 4, and 1 over 4 times e to 9 pi i by 4 for the residue at point e to 3 pi i by 4. And let us simplify the expression for these residues just to make them more suitable for future calculations. The first residue can be transformed into minus 1 quarter times e to i pi by 4. While the second residue can be transformed into 1 quarter times e to minus i pi by 4. So finally we have for our integral the following expression. 2 pi i times minus 1 quarter e to i pi by 4 plus 1 quarter times e to minus i pi by 4. And this sum can be organized into a sine function. In the braces we obviously have minus 2i sine pi by 4 divided by 4. In this way we obtain our final answer for the integral, which is pi times sine of pi by 4, which yields pi over square root of 2. And that completes our first practice. In our next videos we will study more examples and we will even learn some new theorems which simplify the calculations. Thank you.